The 1970s were my glory days in terms of music. I was a teenager for much of the decade. And, well, 1974 was certainly a memorable year on that front, even though it's kind of sad that the top two Billboard Hot 100 singles for that year were Barbra Streisand's The Way We Were and, yes, Terry Jack's Seasons in the Sun. I kid you not. I'm more of a classic rock guy. I think if you know me, you know that. And well, 1974 certainly brought us some amazing music on that end. There were debut albums from Bad Company, Judas Priest, Kansas, Robert Palmer, Todd Rundgren's Utopia, and Rush. We got live albums that year from artists including April Wine, Mott the Hoople, Rod Stewart and the Faces, Bob Dylan with the band, Marvin Gaye, Elvis, and Frank Sinatra. On the softer rock side, there were LPs from America, Jimmy Buffett, Harry Chapin, Neil Diamond, Dan Fogelberg, Gordon Lightfoot, Jackson Brown, John Denver, Carol King, Carly Simon, plus a couple of classics. Linda Ronstadt's Heart Like a Wheel, that included hits like You're No Good and When Will I Be Loved, and Joni Mitchell's fantastic Court and Spark that featured Help Me and Free Man in Paris. There were prog rock albums from Genesis, yeah, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, King Crimson, Brian Eno, and yes, plus a triple live album by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. There were solo albums, believe it or not, by three ex-Beatles, John Lennon, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. And it was just a few months earlier, late 1973, that Paul McCartney and Wings released the great Band on the Run album. Well, in trying to put together a list of my personal top 10 albums from 1974, these albums, unfortunately, did not make the cut. And th these are some great ones. Bob Dylan's Planet Waves, The Doobie Brothers, What Were Once Vices, Deep Purple's Stormbringer, The Eagles, On the Border, which had the hits already gone, and Best of My Love, Elton John's Caribou, The Bitches Back and Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, we're on that one, Billy Joel's Street Life Serenade, The Grateful Dead's Mars Hotel, Little Feet released Feets Don't Fail Me Now. Steely Dan put out Pretzel Logic that year. Stevie Wonder's Fulfilling Us First Finale. What a great album that is. Chicago 7, a double album that had three hit singles on it. Eric Clapton's 461 Ocean Boulevard. I Shot the Sheriff, the big hit on that one. And the Jay Giles Band's Nightmares, even though that album included one of my all-time favorite songs by anybody, Must Have Got Lost. All right, without further ado, my top 10 personal favorite albums from 1974. Number 10 is Lou Reed's great live album, Rock and Roll Animal, with killer versions of Sweet Jane, White Light, White Heat, and Rock and Roll. Number 9, Leonard Skinner's Second Helping, that featured Sweet Home Alabama and Call Me the Breeze, among others. Number 8, I didn't actually learn about this one until a year or two later after their second album hit, but... The debut album from Rush, simply called Rush, of course. That one, the only one without the great Neil Peart on it, Working Man, worth the price of that one on its own. Number seven would be the second album in 10 months from, yeah, Kiss, Hotter Than Hell. Hey, I was a proud member of the Kiss Army, and on this one, the title song plus Let Me Go, Rock and Roll. Number six, a critically acclaimed album from Supertramp, this one, Crime of the Century, Many great songs on that one, such as Bloody Well Right, School, and Dreamer. Okay, my top five, hey, it's only rock and roll, but I like it. And that happens to be my number five favorite from the Rolling Stones, of course. The last one with Mick Taylor on it, by the way. A great cover of Ain't Too Proud to Beg on there also. Number four would be Queen's terrific third album, the one that brought them to the attention of a lot of us here in America because of the hit single Killer Queen, Sheer Heart Attack. Man, I wore out the grooves on this one so damn good. Number three, well, when you talk about great debut albums, this one is very, very high on the list. It is the first album from Bad Company, which uh, featured, of course, the title song and Ready for Love plus Can't Get Enough. Number two would be an album with, well, great songs like Same Old Song and Dance, Lord of the Thighs, and a great cover of Train Kept a Rollin', Aerosmith's Get Your Wings. So good. And my absolute favorite album from 1974, drum roll, please. Man, I love this one. I think I played it every day the summer of 1974. David Bowie's Diamond Dogs. This ain't rock and roll. This is genocide. There was the great title song plus 1984, rock and roll with me, and, of course, Rebel, Rebel, excellent all the way. Well, there you have it. 50 years later, memories from some 
amazing rock and roll that still provides us with lots of listening pleasure today. <laughs> 